thank you for watching uh let's get into the show my name is elizabeth nakiru and uh you're welcome thank you uh good morning our viewers uh have to say we are my names i'm here to give you a clear computation of rental income tax because um, it has been revolving with amendments in the last three consecutive financial years so we felt it prudent at this particular time when you are in to file a provisional return for this year that is 2020 to 2023 and uh, the final return ideally for 2021-2022 is equally due now so that is why we felt we need to come clear and remind you of how rental tax is computed and the changes that have been coming through over the past three years. Thank you, Hafsa. You said we are remaining taxpayers, meaning they have some bit of knowledge about it. Exactly. But for that one who does not know what rental income is, could you explain a little bit? Uh, ideally, rental income is that income that you source out of letting uh, immovable property. Uh, you may have space and you're letting it out in a repetitive manner. Yes. is a payment that, is, uh, that you receive on, say, a monthly basis or quarterly or annual that constitutes rental income. And you could have um, maybe houses, you could have an arcade, whether residential or commercial, all that constitutes rental income tax. Okay. So rental income, so ideally, that is where we pick the rental income tax at the end of it all. Yes. Yes, thank you. So rental income tax in short is whether they are commercial or residential houses. Exactly. It is rental income. Yes, in the event that you pick uh, some income from letting out those premises, it constitutes rental income. The only difference probably in uh, commercial rent mm -hmm. and residential rent, yes. a residential rent doesn't pick VAT, whereas commercial rent will pick VAT. That is the only difference, but ideally, that is all rental income. And in the event that it is not exempted from income tax, that is where we get the thought process of uh, picking income tax from that kind of income. Okay, thank you. So taxpayers, again, would like to know what is the definition of rental income tax? We have been defining rental income. Now we are looking at... That is the income that we compute having uh, you realize some gross income okay. over a period, say, of a year, yes. of some months. Within that financial year where it falls, yes. that is when we come and, and help you compute. Okay. Or the system has formulas where our templates will help compute what you'll be paying as your income tax on rental um, income. Okay. Uh, so viewers would like to know the difference between individual and non-individual accrual rental income tax, is there a difference or they are the same? The difference basically comes in computation yeah, okay. because ideally you source the same income. Yes. But the computation is where we get that differences. Difference. And uh, maybe we need to take our clients through yes. uh, these computations so that uh, if you're there and you're sourcing a rental income and you register this rental income uh, in individual names, ideally that it's on the tin that is in an individual name. You need to know what exactly um, you are going to do. Maybe we need to, they need to share the screen yes. so that our clients there have a look. So we are starting with um, ideally 2020, 2020, 2021 and prior. Yeah. The computation has was was a standard for a long time where it wasn't changing. When I start with individual, yes. within that year, 2020-2021, if you sourced rental income, and ideally at the end of the year, you added all that you received mm -hmm. from letting out that immovable property. Let me imagine it was five million. So when you're an individual, we cap, at that time, we were capping your expenses at 20% mm -hmm. of that income. So you compute 20% of the 5 million. Ideally, it will be a million. So you reduce it from your gross because uh, definitely you must have expensed. Okay. Then when you have a balance of 4 million, still you need to reduce the threshold. Threshold is that amount of money onto which we don't pick taxes. We only pick in excess of that threshold. 
So let's imagine that um, your, your, your rental, your threshold at that particular time was 2 million and it's still 2 million 820 for an individual. Ask me why it's 2 million 820 because this individual, I'm making an assumption that if they were not sourcing rental income, yes. ideally they may have been employed. And if you employed, the threshold for payers you earn is 235. So I'm looking at this client on an annual basis. So I get the 235,000 times 12. That's how I derive the 2 million 820. So I need to reduce it from the 4 million. So I made one mate because this is not a must. In the event that you got a mortgage to improve on this structure where we are receiving rental income tax from, for example, if it was um, a flow and you're adding another flow, so whatever interest accrues on this mortgage is an allowable deduction. That is why I indicated it here, but not everybody may have gotten a mortgage. But I want to make it clear to clients who may have fallen in that arrangement. So that means whatever is under the interest on a mortgage, yes. you reduce it from still the 4 million. Yes. So here I'm taking the threshold because it's a, it's a constant. When I reduce it from the 4 million, I will have 1 million 180. Mm -hmm. So as an individual, at that time, the tax rate was 20%. So you apply the 20% on the 1 million yes. 180 to get 236,000. And that is the rental income tax payable for that year in the event that your figures appear as I have portrayed. Okay, so Hafsa, just to chip in a little bit. So these rates were for 20, last year? 2020, 2020 2021, not last year, the year, the year. Okay. So those rates, 2020, 2021, 21. and prior, okay. that is how we were okay. managing it. So the new ones. Uh, 2021. They are new. We are going to move on year by year okay. because we have been changing for the last yes. three years. That is why I brought these worked out examples for our clients to understand it better. Yes. So still for the same year, 2020, 2021, okay. if you're a non-individual, you registered these properties in non-individual names. Those are company names or trust and your team is for a non-individual. Yes. The computation was very clear that you derive your gross rental income. For example, it was still five million. What happened here at that time, we were not capping interest. We are not capping expenses for non-individuals. Because in the first example where you see an individual, we were capping these expenses at 20%. So we're allowing you within a boundary of 20%. But for non-individuals, we're not capping we were allowing whatever is an expense that you incurred in order to generate this income. So let me imagine it was a two million. And this is justifiable expense because we'll need documents to justify. Okay. So ideally after all this, eh, yes. uh, you just you just deduct the two million. Those are the expenses incurred. Okay. And the balance of three million is what we call chargeable income. It is the income we are going to charge to tax. Or it is the amount of money I'm going to apply, the 30%, which was the tax rate. For non-individuals that year and prior. So when I apply 30% on the 3 million, I will get 900,000. Okay. So that was the computation for that year yeah. and prior. So when we move on to 2021, 2022 that was last year yes. last financial year yes. when the policy amendment came it um it was advocating to look at these these clients okay. in an an equal without discriminating whether individual and individual because what we learned for the prior years most of the clients were running to non-individual mm -hmm. because i'm not capping the expenses yes so they were even declaring expenses that were surpassing their gross income. Um, so ideally the institution wasn't benefiting. Yes. So that's why this amendment came through and say, let us treat them uniformly. Okay. So let me imagine your, your, your income is the same, that year 2021-2022. Whether you're an individual or an individual, and your income was still 5 million. 
So we're allowing them expenses at 75%. Okay. So that means you compute 75% of the 5 million to get your 3 million 750. Those were all expenses that were allowed. Okay. Then definitely when you reduce them off the 5 million, mm -hmm. the balance is what is chargeable income. Okay. And it was in that example, it's 1 million 250,000. So ideally, the, the, the tax rate was standard still yes. at 30%. So 30% of whatever is the balance, that was, that was 1 million 250, and it will give you 375. Okay. So this was cutting across whether individual, individual or non individual. individual, it was cutting okay. across. So here, you're going to come again. This same year, 2022-2023, yeah. is the current year. Another policy amendment came through. Okay. Still on computation of rental income. The reason why we are laboring to do that is at this particular time when I'm coming towards 31st December, mm -hmm. I, am, I am waiting for a provisional return okay. from a client. Okay. And this is how they are meant to compute, or that is what is fixed in the system. Okay. And at the same time, I'm waiting for a final return, which is due by the 31st of December. A final return for both an individual and an non-individual, depending on how you source your income. Yes. Because here, we are focusing on rental income. So that is why I wanted to make it clear, because the computations are different. Mm -hmm. They will pick templates on the portal, but once you put in the year, from 1st July yes. 2021 to 30th June 2022. It will compute the way we have seen. But when you come to this year and it's a provision, ideally it will compute the way we are looking at it. So for this year, when still we, st we say it, let us segregate an individual from a non-individual. So the individual, we tell them ideally to come up with their gross income okay. and I'm using the same example if your gross income is still five million we reintroduce the threshold the other threshold we saw in the 2020 2021 okay. and prior okay. so we reintroduced it for an individual and ideally it has to be knocked off okay. the gross income so whatever is a balance that is a one million one hundred and eighty it is now going to be taxed at 12 percent so ideally for individuals when you look at individuals we reduced the tax rate yes. because as you saw it last year it has been 30 percent yes. so that inc that reduction of 18 uh, percent to come up to the 12 percent ideally for an individual we imagine that that has to constitute your expenses yes. Because a client will ask, where are my expenses? But ideally, when I reduce for you the tax rate, mm -hmm. ideally I'm reducing what you're bringing back to me. Mm -hmm. So whatever happens in between there, the difference is, would have been catering for your expenses. So here, the chargeable income of 1,180,000, we are applying 12% as a tax rate. For an individual yes. who is sourcing rental income, Still, when I go to the non-individual, the, the computation goes like this. I'm imagining they have the same income. income. The gross income is 5 million. Okay. But for this year, I am capping expenses for non-individual at 50%. Yes. So you compute 50% of your gross, which is about 2.5. Okay. And as you reduce it from your gross, the balance is equal to 2.5, and which is my chargeable income. Mm -hmm. So I am meant to apply a 30% as tax rate yes. on the chargeable income of 2.5. I'll have a balance of 750,000. So ideally, that is how we are computing rental income tax, especially this year. This is what is affixed in the formula. Mm -hmm. The only difference you'll ask me is um, how do I, how does the system pick these different rates? Yes. The system gets a command when, you are, when you've uh, downloaded the template, when you're going to fill, 
ideally you put in your tin. Mm -hmm. And the duration. Yeah. Once you say 1st July 2022 to 30th June, it will pick these rates. Okay. And once you give it another year, it is already formatted to pick the rates that applied then. So that is uh, the clarity we wanted to make to our clients to see that in the event that they are getting a mix up here and there, they can e equally sort it out. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Hafsa. That was very eye opening and the breakdown was very clear. And I hope that our taxpayers got that. If anyone needs to rewatch this video, they can always ha see it on our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. And uh, thank you so much, Hafsa, for coming today. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Good day. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together.